Thank you. Thank you, Rapesh. Uh, today, uh, thank you for inviting me here. And today, I'm going to talk about uh, updates in the management of traumatic opt-in neuropathy and uh, no financial disclosures. And a traumatic opt-in neuropathy has an incidence about 0 0.7 to 2.5 following head trauma. And uh, the prevalence rate in the general population is about one in a million at United Kingdom. And there are two types of traumatic opt-in neuropathy. The direct type is caused by direct or penetrating ocular or orbital injury to the opt-in nerve. There is a significant anatomic disruption to the opt-in nerve. Indirect type is caused by the contusional injury to the forehead or the brow region, most commonly in the setting of motor vehicle accident or falls. And it is caused by the transmission of forces to the optic nerve from a distant side without any offer damage to the surrounding tissues. And for the pathogenic mechanism of the indirect type TON, the deformity stress transmitted to the skull from the blunt injuries concentrated in the region of the optic canal. Following trauma, there's a two-stage model. In the first stage, there's an immediate shearing force of the optic nerve axons, and that will cause an irreversible neuronal loss. In the second stage, there's a degree of optic nerve swelling within the tight confine of the optic canal. The, the ensuring compartment syndrome will further impair the already compromised blood supply to the surviving retinal ganglion cells. For, uh, if the indirect traumatic opting neuropathy cases was managed conservatively, there is a spontaneous visual recovery rate for about 40 to 60%. Uh, as for the pro prognostic factors, baseline visual acuity has been the most important predictor for the final outcome. Young age or the early surgical timing is associated with a better prognosis. Loss of conscious, lack of visual recovery after 48 hours, abs absence of the visual evoked response or the presence of a canal fracture is associated with poor prognosis. Uh, the treatment option for the indirect TON is consists of observation, steroid treatment, or the optic canal decompression. The historic support for the steroid use comes from the acute spinal cord injury studies. Patients who received the megadose steroid within eight hours of their injury had significantly better improvement in the neurologic functions. So uh, a few respective studies in the TON have shown that steroid both in the standard dose or in a megadose can increase to two thirds of the fraction the patient who improved. There's a very uh, large study in the 1989 uh, that we call the IOOTS, and that's a large comparative non-randomized study with a total of 133 patients. It was categorized into the untreated uh, corticosteroid and optic canal groups, and the results show that visual acuity increased by three lines in 32% of the surgery group, 50. 7% of the untreated group, 52% of the steroid group. And they conclude that neither corticosteroid nor optic canal surgery could be considered as the standard care for the patient with indirect TON. And uh, Dr. Patrick Uwama had a uh, review, uh, did a Cochrane review of the in 2013, and uh, they found that only one study met the selection criteria of a double mask placebo control group. And uh, there, uh, this study have uh, 31 patients and uh, it was divided into the steroid group and the placebo group. And the visual improvement rate occurs in 53% of the placebo group and 68% uh, of the treatment group. And uh, the difference was not statistically significant. And the American Academy of Ophthalmology had a report on 2020, and they reviewed the literature on 2020 and the, from the PubMed database. And in the 172 studies, they found 32 studies met all the study criteria. And the, in these 32 studies, no study met the criteria for the level one evidence. And the, they found seven studies focused on the corticosteroid effect. And uh, they conclude that the corticosteroid did not have a uniformly better outcome than observation alone. Here is the table for the seven studies. And then you can see that three studies show no difference for the steroid effect and the, the observation alone. And the two studies show no control groups. One study show a, a observation was 
have a better outcome and one study show steroid have a better outcome. So there's a no uniform better outcome for the steroid use. The historic support for the surgical treatment comes from several uncontrolled and retrospective studies. And in the past time, decompression for the TON was a major undertaking using open neurosurgical approach. And for the last 20 years, and it has been changed into a minimal invasive endoscopic transnasal approach, which is associated with much less complications. And let's look back uh, at the IO, IONTS study again. In that study, there was no specific protocol for patient selection or surgical technique of the optic canal decompression. The result shows that the visual acuity improvement only with 32% in the surgical group. That's the lowest one in the three group. And in 2021, there's a review article from China. They have reviewed 23 studies from 1997. And among these 23 studies, we found there are 12 studies with patient number over 25 patients. And in these 12 studies, the improvement rate ranges from 9.5% to 81%. That's a quite large range. And, uh, but if you look into detail, you will find that most of, the, most of them report an improvement rate of 45 to 65%, which is quite similar to the spontaneous recovery rate. And uh, look, let's look at the AAO report in 2020 again. In this report, they found 20 studies focused on the effect of the optic canal decompression. This 20 study include three level two and the 17 level three studies. And it, they conclude that although the visual improvement was noted after the decompression, however, study that directly compare surgery with medical therapy did not report uniformly improved the outcomes after the decompression. Uh, this, uh, this was the table for the 20 studies. And then you can see that among these 20 studies, 13 study was without control group and the two study without statistic analysis and the five study show no statistic difference between the surgical decompression and the uh, steroid use. So in summary, despite many reports of visual improvement with corticosteroid or optic canal decompression for indirect TON, current evidence does not demonstrate a consistent increased benefit for either corticosteroid or optic canal decompression. No consensus exists from the study published to date on a preferred standard treatment for indirect TON. Treatment strategy should be customized for each individual patients. We should emphasize the importance of informing the current evidence and the potential side effects for, of either interventions. Thank you for your attention.